Hi, I'm Mackenzie. Today we're here in the dining room of the John Brown House. We're going to be looking at stenciling, specifically colonial stenciling. So stenciling was a technique that homeowners would use if they couldn't afford wallpaper. You would paint a design on it, you would cut out the design, and you would throw the motif on the wall and you'd be able to paint it, and you would get that design and you'd be able to replicate it. Stenciling was often completed by travelers looking for food and board in return. With this, you are often left with distinct stencil motifs throughout neighboring areas. The stencil work in this room is common to early 1800 Eastern American stenciling. When the previous homeowner, John Jupian, decided to recreate the stenciling here in the dining room, he had to sort of assume where some of the pieces went. We have six stencil motifs present in this room. Five of them were recreated from the original samples that John found. He decided to do a lot of it symmetrically, which makes sense because we are in a Georgian style home. So as here you can see, there's two here, but then it goes three, three, and three with the other motifs. Here you can actually tell that some of the motifs, they may look finished, but they actually aren't. This motif right here is a very traditional Georgian style stencil. Usually though, there would be a vine that ran right through the center of it, which would actually give a wholeness to it. Same with at the bottom here, it would actually have some kind of a infinity loop. So these stencil works are actually created in a way that would give the motif some kind of symbolism and if they aren't actually finished sometimes it loses that effect. This floral one was found in the book American Stenciling which the John Brown house is actually featured in. The previous homeowner John Jupian is a local heritage consultant. He lived in the house from 1979 to 2015. He decided to complete a single date restoration of this room. In the 1980s, when John was restoring this specific room, he took down a partition wall that ran from two-thirds of the room. When he did so, he ended up finding 1800s stenciling behind it. Because this was the best preserved example of it, he ended up keeping this section and he recreated what it would have been from floor to ceiling. And in that way, if he interpreted this, he'd be able to interpret the rest of the room in that style. In efforts to preserve the stencil work, John covered it with plexiglass and adhesive. There are two reasons why this method isn't exactly ideal. Over time, the strength of the adhesive has failed and actually pulled some of the stencil work off the wall with it. In this location where the window brings in a lot of sunlight, there is a highly reflective quality to the glass, making the stencil work hard to see. So instead, we are looking at newer alternative methods to preserve the stencil work. Our goal is to reinterpret this room stenciling by simplifying the colors and designs. This allows a lot of the focus to be on the stencil work rather than distract the viewers from it. With lighter walls and less stenciling, our intention is to highlight stenciling as a heritage craft rather than its traditional goal to recreate repetitive wallpapers.